streamer fishing in general, when you're throwing streamers, larger forge items, you're often targeting larger fish. And larger fish often have smaller bite windows, meaning there are less times when they feed. Typically, or usually if you will, larger fish feed in lower light conditions. They've gotten big for being smart and being able to adapt to the conditions. And when you're fishing normal bright light conditions, larger fish often will not hunt or be out in the open during that time because they know they are more susceptible to being predated on by hawks, herons, and so forth. So when you're fishing streamers, often your need to understand is that you often need to pick your poison. And that is fish streamers in times of low light periods, cloud cover, early morning, late morning, or in this case, a storm. These low light periods kind of activate, get the smaller bait fish active, and as a result, because the smaller bait fish are active, larger fish are also going to be out on the hunt. So in this condition right here, we've got some rain. It's not too hard. This is a nice steady rain, but this is like the perfect condition, perfect situation where I find that you're going to have the fish that you want to be targeting, the larger fish are going to be out looking for food. So let's see what we can do. Another thing about streamers is often don't just develop a bank fixation. You know, banks are great, but usually banks are often shallow, sections of water, there's overhang and so forth. These are often places where fish, larger fish, will actually go into to feed. Sometimes they will hold fish day in, day out, larger fish, but often these banks or the shallow sections are often just hunting grounds during low light periods. So definitely in conditions like this, I would be this cloud cover rain i'm going to be hitting the banks pretty hard this morning but if this was bright and sunny i would be working the banks a little bit but i would actually be spending more of my time if i wanted to fish streamers in a lot of the slower deeper sections of water because that's where normally these fish are going to be holding uh, during periods of bright sun or clear water Another thing worth mentioning is that when you are working the banks, the tanks, often when you're working the banks, the takes are often like instantaneous. And if I cast here, as an example, cast and let go of my line, and then try grabbing my line, by the time I'm in control, often I've already missed that strike. So what we call is what we call shooting through the O-ring, right here. This is gonna be my line hand. As I'm making a cast, I'm gonna keep the line pinched here in my line hand. And as I make a cast and shoot line, I keep it in this ring, transfer it over quickly to my rod hand, and then I have control. But in this instance, I don't have any moments where I am not in control of the presentation. So shoot the line through that O-ring, have control, make a cast, and immediately start stripping. That's gonna give you control from the very moment the flies land. And go under the banks here. Oops, miss a little side swipe. Sometimes you have these fish that just do a little drive-by. They're not all as interested in eating the fly as they are, just taking a quick little look. So we'll see if we can go back to that fish here. Off the bank, strip. Try to switch it up in that same position. Nope, just one drive-by. Because of the, the light, focusing on the banks, in this case, as long as I physically am able to, I'm going to be kind of working dead center of the stream and just kind of working off either side here. And these little back bays, just remember, larger trout need protection. They need areas where they can hide and get into their ambush spots. So logs, woods, debris, anything that looks like a potential hut or a housing unit for a larger fish is likely going to be a good spot to put your fly. So find structure and then we're going to work that structure the other thing i want to mention is this if you don't occasionally get stuck in the bank or on wood or off logs it simply means you're not fishing aggressive enough now i'm not saying you need to catch the tree branches, 
and trees every cast or every other cast but occasionally if you're not getting stuck on the banks or along woods or right along tight to the structure you're just not fishing aggressive enough trotter sometimes just they need a little more aggression and what i mean by that is you need to bring the fight to them often if you put your fly two three feet away from a fish it may not be all that interested and a lot of times when you're fishing streamers like this larger bait fish sometimes the, the strikes are not just out of hunger often it's a territorial kind of you're pissing off the fish and you need to bring that fight to the fish and if you make a cast two three four feet away from that fish often you're not going to initiate that that aggression so you sometimes you gotta basically put the fly right in that fish's face and just let the fish make a decision on what it wants to do we're gonna work the structure nice and tight here there goes another fish flash flash here we goes right off the uh. <laughs> so here's what that this is a great example i did an okay job but in this situation right here what you don't want to do is set with the rod tip trout set what we want to do here with streamers is often make a cast and when we strip when the fish comes in we're going to use the line hand to strip in the fly often what you saw there if you should see it on on camera often the trout will come in and do what they call like short strike and they'll just kind of follow swipe just take like these short little grabs at the fly not necessarily eating the fly but just trying to stun it kill it slow it down and if you set with the rod tip you're pulling the fly out of that trout zone and often the fish will come in and hit your fly two three four times and eventually go in and then devour the fly so this is where just using that little strip set here make a cast use the line hand right here when the fish does hit there's your set right there and that keeps the fly in the strike zone so use a strip strike right here make a cast to the bank okay there we go good fish strip set when you have a decent fish like this keep control don't get panicked don't rush just calm and control keep the rod tip down if possible you keep the fish's head underneath the water the fish tends to calm down and then it keeps the fish under the faster hydraulics keep the rod tip down head underneath the water and when you're ready rod tip up and bring them right into the net nice wild brown trout And there's multiple ways of moving your fly. When I'm trying to keep my fly moving fast, if I really want to pull the fly fast, I'll make a longer cast, keep the fly line on the water, rod tip down, and I'll do what we call a strip retrieve right here where I'm using the line hand to pull the fly back to me. Those are great times when fish are active and you need to kind of pull the fly fast to kind of initiate that quick decision, that fight or that flight response. Or if I want to, we can do this almost like a nymphing technique where I can cast upstream, allow the fly to drop, and just slowly lift the rod tip. I can put some movement into the fly, or if I want to, I could just cast here, high stick, what we call high sticking, and just basically dead drift this, imitating almost like a dead, wounded, or dying bait fish, which is sometimes the ticket as well. So the whole point about streamer fishing is that just be dynamic, switch it up. You know, when fish are on the hunt, I like casting and pulling the fly fast. When they're not on the hunt, they're lying deep, maybe a little more dormant. Then we can go to a traditional high sticking technique. So mix it up, let the fish tell you what to do. Often you can't dictate to the fish. So you just, if things, one of the technique isn't working, definitely switching patterns is a decent idea. But more importantly, before you think about switching patterns or colors your patterns, often just think about switching your approach slowing your presentation down going deeper going shallower that is often 
the variable that leads to success or a lack of success and not necessarily That's a good, decent, another good fish here. So, so what we did end up doing here is just shallower water. I'm gonna start stripping immediately, but in this deeper water, even though these fish are on, sometimes just casting upstream and just a slower retrieve often means the fly getting a little bit deeper. When the fish gets fly gets a little deeper, often you get the ability or have the ability to pull some decent fish off the bottom, like this guy or girl. That's a healthy fish. Beautiful fish. Okay. Go back over here now. Shallow water, fast strips. Lifts. All I'm doing with this approach right here, I'm just trying to jig this fly. I have a heavily weighted jig. And this, you could just kind of just cast upstream and just kind of just a flat line pull with the line hand. But one of the things I want to do is just try to use the combination of a strip along with the rod tip just to get the head of that fly to move up and down. And sometimes what we call jigging is just uh, that up and down movement of the fly is just often, often resist, irresistible to a fish. So a little up and down, up and down. That's what we call jigging. So when you're working streamers, obviously sometimes it's a nice flat line here, but when that fly is kicking up and down, I'm not sure if trout think it's a wounded bait fish or whatever they're thinking, it just often is a trigger. So just that little additional movement here, let the flies drop up and down, combination lift, and there we go. And here's the fish of the day, log. All right. Mm, there we go. Saw that thing roll twice. <laughs> this is like, again, this is, uh, you know, whenever you can get a rainy day, I know so many anglers like, ah, we know we're not gonna go out in the rain, but man, like, when you have conditions like this like this these are the days that you just get excited about fishing because you know this is when they're on the hunt larger fish are on the hunt and it's such a great time to be throwing streamers that fish flashed this one flashed once or twice beautiful fish this thing flashed i didn't get excited you know and set with a rod tip i kept stripping kept stripping i saw a couple flashes and eventually it came in and right at the very end it decided to take it so again this is why it's just being patient and probably one of the best tips i can give you when you're working streamers is thinking about to yourself i'm kind of a mental approach the words or the phrases phrases that you say to yourself and often when you hear the word set as an example what i mean by that is this when i say the word set you automatically want to just set with a rod tip when you set when you're working streamers, often you don't want to set with a rod tip. What you want to do is you want to use the line hand as a slip, as basically as a strip strike right here. So when I'm working with myself or if I'm working with a client or a guest, what I'm going to say is strip, 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 strip. And when you say strip, that immediately forces me to, instead of using the rod tip, but instead it makes me go immediately to my line hand to make the set right here. So when I see a fish following, if I see a client working the streamer and a fish is following, I'll just say, keep saying strip, 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 rather than set. The moment you say set to someone else or to yourself, you're gonna wanna set with the rod tip. So make that cast here, say strip, 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 strip. Now it doesn't work for everyone, but just that simple phrasing, that change a phrasing can often affect and alter your physical uh, approach to streamer fishing. So again, just a few thoughts, bits of wisdom here for you.